Hey guys, it's Scott here and welcome to today's video. In this one, we're going to be looking at one player to watch in each Premier League team this season. So this could be a new signing, a player that has slowly transitioned and is now going to have their breakthrough season, a youngster coming into the first team for the first time, basically someone that should be entertaining for you to watch and see their progress. So we're going to do one player for each team. Let me know if you have any other ones. For example, let's say I chose Mo Salah for Liverpool. You may think there's a youngster coming through that is the guy that deserves the attention this season. I want to hear your thoughts on each of the teams or maybe just the team you support in the comments section. If you do enjoy the video as well, please do hit the thumbs up and leave some comments. It does make a big difference in pushing this channel out to more people. If you want to see more videos like this and all the other stuff that's on the channel, we've done a range of different videos so far. Hit subscribe and make sure to follow us on Twitch if you want to see my live streams. So without further ado, Let's get into it. Starting off first, we're going with Arsenal, and I'm going to go with Gabriel Martinelli. Now, they have made some signings, such as like the 50 mil signing of Ben White, who did not have the best Premier League debut last night, getting bullied by Tony. But Martinelli is a guy that I really, really enjoy watching. He's a very exciting, explosive forward player who looks like he's going to be getting more minutes if he can sustain a lack of injury. That's been the problem in the past is that he has repeatedly got little knocks here and there, so hasn't got a proper run in the team, but I love watching Martinelli play and I want to see more. For Aston Villa, I'm going to go with Buendia. Now, there obviously are a couple of choices. They've made some big signings, including Danny Ings, which is going to be a lot of people's pick for this team. But Buendia, done really, really well at Norwich, has an incredible eye for a pass. Very, very nice, creative player, exciting to watch. And I'm really interested to see how he's going to partially fill that Jack Grealish void for Villa, including himself, Danny Ings and Bailey on the other wing. It's going to be pretty damn exciting to watch them. And I think Wendia is going to be the pick of the bunch. Now, Brentford don't really need much introduction. If you watched the opener of the Premier League last night, you will know... They seem to be here to not mess about, really, after beating Arsenal in their first return to the Premier League in over 70 years. And Tony is the guy. He was always going to be the guy for this video. And he showed on his debut in the Prem why he is being hyped up. He bullied Ben White in the air all night. He was a menace. He didn't get a goal. However, he was always in and around the area. So Tony scored a ton of goals last season to help Brentford get promoted. He is the guy this season, probably in a lot of your fancy teams already. Next up for Brighton, I'm going with a player who actually isn't going to play the first few games, and it is Tarek Lamptey. I absolutely love this guy. He is a marauding fullback if ever I've seen one. Him driving forward on the ball is a brilliant sight to see. He is going to be out for the first three or four games of the season, and then he should be fit to play. If he can play the rest of the season without getting injured, you are going to see the talent that this guy has. Honestly, as attacking fullbacks go, there aren't many that are more excited on the ball than him. So, Lamptey's my pick. As most of you will probably think, they're not the most thrilling team in the world. They don't have the most exciting play style, etc. A lot of it is uh, using the physicality of people like Chris Wood. And he is one that you could end up watching because he's probably going to get quite a few goals this season. But I like Dwight McNeil playing out wide. He is a player that could actually play for a more technical sided team than Burnley. However, his attributes such as his crossing and getting into good spaces really do work for that team. And so McNeil is my shout whenever you're watching Burnley play. Now, Lukaku would be the easy pick for Chelsea. I've put him to be my top scorer, and you can see where he made Chelsea finish in my Premier League rankings video that you'll find on my channel. But I'm going with Havertz. I think that he's going to do really well this season. I think that this is going to be his breakthrough Prem season. Obviously, he did really, really well at Leverkusen before he came into Chelsea. Struggled, had COVID, apparently long COVID as well. Then, towards the end of the season, was starting to find a bit of form under Tuchel. Obviously, scored the winning goal in the Champions League final. I think this is going to be his year. Now, Palace is an interesting one. I wanted to go for Eze. However, we don't know when he's going to be back playing. It might not even be this year year so he might be out for a few more months so I'm gonna go with Anderson for a little bit of a different shout I know a defender but I thought he was decent when he played at Fulham previously in the Premier League and now he's at Palace so I want to see if he can come in for the people that are leaving like Gary Cahill and see if he can fill their boots and actually sort of dominate in that position for this Palace team obviously now under a new manager as well 
rather than Roy Hodgson. We've got a different manager in, and so maybe a different play style for Palace this season, but he's my shout. Off the back of a Brazil Olympic gold medal, I'm going to go with Richarlison for Everton this season. I feel like... He's, he's been there a couple of years and he's shown that he is good, but he needs to step up to that next level. And considering how well Calvert-Lewin did in terms of goal scoring last season, I feel like Richarlison is going to have to up his game a little bit to potentially be seen as the main man. And so... I think that he's really, really going to try hard. He won't play for the first game or two because of the Olympics, etc. But once he gets back into the team, I can see him firing and having a really good season. Leeds next, and Rafinha is my guy. I really, really enjoy watching him play. He's a winger that likes to do skills, trickery, great dribbling. He's an exciting player to watch. And so it had to be Rafinha for me. I don't really need to say much else. I just really enjoy watching this guy play football. Now, next up is Leicester. Obviously, my team. There's a couple of shouts that we could have here. Buba Sumare that we've signed from Lille looks like a Yaya Torre style player who's going to absolutely dominate. However, I'm going to go with a bit of a, a, a bit of a, a throw in the wind, really. We're going with Kiernan Dewsbury Hall, a youngster who has been out on loan a couple of times, did really, really well last season out on loan, and is really pushing now to become a first-team player. Now, he won't be starting every single game, but he's going to get appearances off the bench. He has been doing in all of preseason, even the Community Shield. And I feel like if, for example, Madison gets injured, you're going to see him come in and start to play. And I feel like he's just a really exciting player, really, really nice and technical on the ball, has a great eye for a pass, good movement, and he's young, he's got a lot of potential. So, again, a bit of an outside pick, this one. Someone would have probably gone for Bertrand, Sumari or Daka, one of the new signings, but yeah. Kin and Dewsbury Hall. Next up, Liverpool. Now, a couple of shouts from people that have been telling me in advance of this video. I should go for Harvey Elliott. However, I want to go for Jota. And the reason why is because Firmino hasn't been the same for the last few seasons since he had that really, really good patch for Liverpool. And I feel like it is time for Jota, hopefully, to not get injured this season because that ruined him last year. And just make that step up to potentially being starting with Salah and Mane either side of him. I really, really enjoy watching Jota play. He's a very good player. And let's hope that we see more of him this year. Manchester City now. And a lot of people are going to take Jack Grealish. £100 million signing. Really, really obvious pick. But I want to go with Mares, And the reason why is because I still feel like he's a bit underrated for them. And... He's been absolutely smashing it so far in preseason, and I'm kind of hoping that this season is the one where people really, truly realise how good he is for them. With Bernardo Silva potentially leaving and stuff like that, he should be getting more and more minutes than ever before, and so hopefully this is a season where Riyad shows those true colours. Manchester United, I'm going with Sancho. I love watching the guy play. Every single time he's on the ball, he looks forward, he's direct, he's pacey, he's skillful, he's exciting as a footballer. And so I'm really, really happy that he's in the Premier League now and I can see him play week in, week out. It's going to be very entertaining and there's probably going to be incredible highlight reels come the end of the season. Sancho, expensive signing, a lot expected from him, but I'm very excited about him. Now, this is not going to be a surprise. St. Maximan is my Newcastle pick. Exactly what I've said about some of these other wingers. Probably one of the most, if not the most, exciting players to watch in the Premier League. Every single time he gets the ball, you know he wants to go forward. He wants to dribble. He wants to skill past a man. His explosive sprints. He's so exciting to watch. So entertaining. He's whacking out, like, Rabonas and everything like that every single week. He's so fun to watch. And so St. Maximan, I just beg that he stays injury free this season. We get a whole season of the Gucci. For Norwich, I'm going to go with Todd Cantwell. Did quite well in the Premier League last time he was in the league. Did well in the Championship again. And so he's just an exciting player. He's quite creative and he has that vision that sometimes players that are making the jump from the Championship to the Prem don't seem to be able to pick out those passes that they did against worse defenders and worse sort of structured teams. But he's impressive as a player. Obviously, they've lost Buendia, and so some more of the fall is basically going to come down on Campwell. He's going to have more influence on the team, so he's my pick. Southampton next. I'm going with Adam Armstrong. Absolutely smashed it 
for Blackburn and now has made that step up to the Premier League for Southampton as their Danny Ings replacement. Hopefully he's going to step up to the mark and show his worth in this league. And if he does, then he's going to be scoring a lot of goals. Southampton losing Ings, losing Vestergaard. Some people are worried about them, but Armstrong is a bit of a shrewd signing. Pretty good for the price. And so I'm excited to see him in the Prem. For Spurs, I'm going to go with Gilles. They have also signed Romero from Atalanta, who could be an absolute animal. But Gilles, very exciting, younger player, was playing in the Olympics as well and showed that he does have a bit about him. I'm very interested to see how he's going to fit in at Tottenham and adapt to the new league in the Prem. He could be sort of... Finally, a good winger replacement. They've tried to have Bale on loan. They've had Lucas Moura, people like that. And it's not really worked that well. So here's hoping for their sake that Gilles is the guy. Watford, I'm going, is Marla Saar. He was so electric to watch when he was in the Premier League last time. Same again in the Championship. I want him to go through the season without an injury and show why there was a lot of rumoured interest, for example, from Liverpool. Last time Watford got relegated, a lot of people were saying that Liverpool were going to try and sign Saar, but it didn't end up happening. He was instrumental when they actually managed to end Liverpool's unbeaten run in the league. And so I'm excited to see him back in the broom. West Ham, I'm going with Ben Rama. I'm really hoping that this is the season that he steps up. Last year, Lingard took a lot of the responsibility in that sort of position, but they haven't managed to re-sign him. Ben Rama's had a year to adapt to a new team, a new league and a new play style. I really enjoy watching the guy. I was actually jealous when West Ham signed him ahead of Leicester. And so I want to see Ben Rama do well, and I'm hoping that this is his season. And then we end things off with Wolves, and I'm going to go with Trincao, who they have got from Barcelona. Again, linked with Leicester. We were potentially going to get him on loan, but he has gone to Wolves. Shock, Portuguese player signing for Wolves, yada, yada, yada. But an exciting youngster that could... And, well, he already has a high ceiling and high potential. Can he reach that in the Premier League for them? For his sake, I hope so. And again, a nice tricky winger. I'm excited to see him play. So those are my picks for ones to watch from each Premier League team. Who would you change from any of these teams or all of them if you're feeling really juicy about it? Let me know in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you want to see more videos. Thumb this one up if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the Leicester vs Wolves vlog. Goodbye.